President Joe Biden and Israeli President Benjamin Netanyahu spoke yesterday after there was a disagreement between the two regarding a ceasefire. While Netanyahu stood by his view that there shouldn't be a ceasefire, after the talks he stated, as far as a tactical little pause, an hour here, an hour there, we've had those before. I suppose we'll check the circumstances in order to enable the goods, humanitarian goods to come in and our hostages, individual hostages to leave. But I don't think there's going to be a general ceasefire. Now, this is not what the world wanted to hear. They would like the attacks on Gaza to stop, especially they'll allow the innocent to leave. Now, Israel is admittedly in a very tough position because they want to get rid of Hamas. However, Hamas is deeply entrenched in the general public. That means innocent people are in the same areas as these Hamas fighters, and so innocent people are being killed on a daily basis. These killings and deaths are being captured in photo and video, and they're being pumped out every single day to over a billion people who are every day siding more and more with Palestine versus Israel. So this is why the United States is encouraging Israel, hey, listen, we're on your side, we have your back, but you've got to slow down or you're going to have the entire world angry at you. While most Republicans and Democrats have pledged their support for Israel, Democrat Representative Rashida Tlaib has caused major friction by backing Palestine and Hamas publicly. Most recently, Tlaib defended protesters who shouted, Palestine will be free from the river to the sea during a recent protest at the White House. While she claimed the saying was simply an aspirational call for freedom, this couldn't be further from the truth. According to American Jewish Committee, the saying from the river to the sea has been used as a common call for pro-Palestinian activists. It's a call for the establishment of the state of Palestine, which means the wiping out of Israel, 8 million Jews in Israel. Now, in response to this controversial statement, Democrat Representative Jared Moskowitz has called for the censorship of Ms. Tlaib. Uh, so now there are Democrats turning on her and a whole bunch of Republicans that are turning on her. Now, on the Republican side, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell just bashed both uh, Tlaib and former President Barack Obama for their position. McConnell called Tlaib's statements genocidal while claiming Obama used the same breath to criticize Israel for occupying Gaza. McConnell educated Obama's criticism by stating, in reality, the only force that has occupied Gaza since 2007 is Hamas, not Israel. Now, right before hitting record on this daily news report, uh, Representative Tlaib publicly told the press that she and others like her will never forget what Biden has done and that Biden's presidency is over. She will actively tell people not to vote for him in 2024 unless he switches course right now. I don't think he's going to. Uh, so this could be a huge swath of people who believe the same way as Tlaib, not voting for Biden in 2024. By the way, thank you guys so much for giving these videos a like. It really helps me out. So thank you guys so much. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to link today's earlier interview with comedian and political activist Jimmy Dore, where we go into some really interesting and deep uh, political conversations. It was an absolute thrill. I'll put it at the end of this video. Okay, now back in the Senate, Republicans have just unveiled that they want changes to border security protocol in exchange for their support for more taxpayer money to Ukraine. Senator Lindsey Graham stated, we must make policy changes to reduce the flow of immigration. The world is on fire and threats to our homeland are at an all-time high. President Biden's border policies are not working and it's time to change course. In regards to what these policy changes are 
it seems they are main they mainly relate to making it harder for migrants to claim asylum by having to pro provide proof that they are under credible fear of persecution in their homeland. So this basically we want to beef up uh, American border security if we're going to send uh, taxpayer money for Ukraine's border security. White House National Economic Council Director Laurel Brainerd has just responded to polls which show that Americans are very unhappy with Joe Biden's economy. As expected, Brainerd shrugged off the opinion of the American people and claimed that there aren't any world leaders that wouldn't rather have Biden's economic record than their own. She blamed the negative polling numbers on people being affected by the pandemic, wars, oil price spikes, which are all subjects which are directly tied to Biden and his policies. But she doesn't see this, right? So she blames you. You are to blame for inflation. You are to blame for higher prices. And you are to blame for not having more money. This is not Joe Biden's problem, according to her. But we all know that presidents have a huge sway over what happens in the economy. And they've done everything they can to shut down energy production. And so I completely disagree with this Biden administration official. It is not our fault. It is uh, somewhat linked, uh, linked to COVID. It is linked to the overprinting of the American dollar. It is linked to wars. It is linked to giving money to everybody but Americans. So yeah, there, there are issues there, but don't blame us for your policies and your decisions and your behavior. Mayor of Nashville, Freddie O'Connell, has just opened an investigation into conservative talk show host Steven Crowder, who leaked the alleged manifesto from the evil culprit that carried out a school shooting in the city. In the alleged letter, the motive seemed to be hatred towards privileged white people, which Crowder has alleged is why they did not want to release it. In regards to the investigation, the city of Nashville is trying to discover how documents could have been leaked and has not denied their authenticity, which le leads me to believe that they are authentic documents. Now, should Crowder be punished because this information was leaked to him, a member of the press? Or should the city of Nashville be ashamed of themselves for trying to cover up the fact that this transgender shooter was specifically targeting white people, which is a hate crime. So I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Former President Donald Trump has just posted a piece of alleged evidence that he says clears his name in the fraud case in the state of New York. The document he posted showcased a disclaimer clause that was reportedly plastered at the beginning of every financial document which had valuations of his different properties. The clause stated that the valuations were estimated and are not necessarily indicative of the amount that could be realized upon the disposition of the assets or payment of the related liabilities. The disclaimer also warned that variables such as different expectations regarding the market could change the value amount. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but this is a very solid disclaimer. On top of that, on top of saying, don't trust us, uh, get your own numbers, banks always get their own numbers, right? They always pull people in to review financial documents, and they always have third-party or in-house uh, auditors and appraisers that go over the financial records and also over the properties. Anybody who's bought a house that watches me knows that what I am saying is absolutely true. Democrat Senator John Fetterman of New Jersey just slammed California Governor Gavin Newsom for allegedly running a secret presidential campaign against Biden. We all know that Gavin Newsom is planning to run for president. While Newsom has denied this and says he 100% supports Joe Biden, Fetterman stated Newsom just doesn't have the guts to announce his secret motives. Now, Republicans have known that he is getting ready to run for president for a long time. But keep this in mind. He just traveled to China to interact with them on behalf of the United States. He's not the president 
or an ambassador uh, or a diplomat. He's a governor. And yet he went and behaved as a president of the United States. On top of that, it was released last night that he's been donating money to leaders in South Carolina. Why South Carolina? That's the first stop when it comes to the Democrat National Convention. Why would he be sending money there? He's trying to grease the palms of the very people that he needs to support him when he does finally come out and announce his presidency. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. I really appreciate you being in my YouTube community. I know there's a lot of places to get your news, so thank you so much. Please give this video a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out this interview from earlier today. It's amazing. And also check out this video. Thanks so much. And I will see you on the next video.